welcome to worship today. We are excited to gather together from all over the place to worship God in collaboration with our Tri-Church partners, Emmanuel, St. Paul, and St. John. Today in our worship, we are commemorating the Reformation. So as Lutheran churches, um, we remember our tradition and how our church was founded as a part of Christendom. Um, on October 31st, 1517, um, Martin Luther nailed 95 theses against the a church wall in Wittenberg, Germany. And it was the spark that ignited the Reformation for totally reforming uh, much of the church. And it's where we get our namesake today. Um, I hope that you are able to think about how the church is continuing to reform. We wear red to think of, to symbolize the Holy Spirit of how passion um, burns uh, and leads us into new horizons. So we will be thanking God for our heritage and what has come before us and be thinking and praying for how God will use the church and reform us in the future. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is eager to forgive, who loves us beyond our days. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, <laughs> 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we praise you for renewing the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them grounded in your word. Protect us in times of trial, and bless us with your saving grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Judeans who believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slave to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Over the past few months here at St. Paul, we have been exploring the Bible stories that are depicted in our stained glass windows throughout our sanctuary. Our windows, um, or excuse me, this series we are calling a worship series called Our Sacred Stories. We have explored our ancient role models in the faith, such as Eve and Adam, Noah, Moses, Bathsheba and David, and Isaiah. Today, all around the world, the Lutheran Church is commemorating the Reformation Sunday. And so we will be using our choir window to help us explore the story of our ancestor in the faith, Martin Luther. This window is extremely large, and so I can only get um, most of it in the shot. Um, but I hope that as we are exploring these themes and scripture together, um, it'll give you a good visual to think about what we're talking about. We today remember Martin Luther for his work reforming the church and refocusing back on God's grace rather than punishment. However, on this special day, we have to be careful that we're not celebrating Martin Luther, nor are we celebrating our German heritage. Um, we can remember them, but instead, this is a day that we are worshiping God like any other Sunday, and we are especially wanting to center God's grace in our lives. First, let us consider how God's grace was present as Martin Luther reformed the church and helped them focus more on God's grace. It was such an essential part of his theology and our theology today that that's what we will focus on. You see, Martin Luther, as most of you know, um, was a 16th century monk and professor, and he was tormented by his guilt over his sins. He lived in a time when the church taught that you had to do good works to earn your salvation, and if you sinned, you had to do penance or be punished by God. God was not thought to be all loving and merciful, but punitive. And the church, um, what they did was they were like, oh, well, you're going to have to, you know, appease God for your sins. And one way that you can do that was they developed a way that you could pay your penance. And Luther thought that this was a corrupt practice that especially exploited the poor. He felt that paying God for God's grace was impossible through penance or pennies. So Luther's understanding was reformed when he read the book, the biblical book of Romans, and he realized that God's grace was a free gift for all who had faith in Christ. Luther reformed his thinking and shared this good news of God's grace with everyone. His teachings were so radical that he was considered an outlaw and he had to run for his life. After this drama set settled down, he decided to uh, make his life, 
his life's work all about making God's grace accessible to everyone. He abandoned the traditions where worship could only be said in Latin, which most of the peasants could not understand, and instead he led the Mass in German. He also tra translated the Bible into German and wrote materials for families to explore their faith at home, which they had never had before. Martin Luther is considered a great reformer, but it was God's spirit working through him. Luther left us many teachings to help us keep focused on our relationship with God through keeping Christ at the center of our lives. Luther created a special seal to symbolize our life in Christ. It's depicted at the very top of our window, but because you can't see it, I'm going to show it to you here. This is a picture of the Luther seal. It's also sometimes called the Luther rose. Um, it is a black cross surrounded by a red heart, which is set within a white rose that's encircled in a ring of blue and gold. Luther explained his seal by saying that first and foremost, the cross must be at the center and remind us that it is our faith in the crucified one that saves us. We heard a little bit about this in our gospel text about how Jesus saves and gives all people freedom. In this story that we heard, Jesus is trying to help some of the Jews Judeans and Jerusalem elite understand that he is the true freedom in life. He's the way to that, to that special freedom. They claim that they have never been slaves to anyone, but this is just silly because they are descendants of Abraham and they were enslaved in Egypt, but God delivered them. Yet, their claim that they um, are free is somewhat self-righteous. They're making it seem like they don't need God because they have it all under control, just because they're descendants of Abraham. But Jesus expresses that though they are no longer enslaved to a taskmaster and can live as they choose, they are still a slave to sin. But Jesus can set them free from sin and it all happens through God's grace. Jesus sets the people free. He died on the cross and all sin and death perished with him. On the third day, he rose again so that love and life win forever. They are always the final victory. And it's in this redeeming love where Jesus sets everyone free. Salvation becomes not about what you can earn, but it's about um, everybody having this salvation. It doesn't matter if you're connected to Abraham. It doesn't matter if you feel self-righteous. In Jesus's death and resurrection, God's saving grace redeems us from sin and death and sets everybody free. For Luther, this means that love doesn't have to be earned, but it's a free gift. And if we look back at the seal, when we turn to God's Free, when, excuse me, when we trust in God's free gift of love and grace, we have faith. And Luther concludes that our faith in Christ will lead to joy. He talks about this in his seal. He says, The heart is fixed upon the center of a white rose that shows that faith causes joy, consolation, and peace. The rose is white, not red, because white is the ideal color of all angels and blessed spirits. Our faith or our trust in God's love and grace and mercy can give us peace. We don't have to worry about our sal salvation or earning God's love. Instead of worry, we can live with joy in the freedom of Christ. We can take delight in God's love for us and then joyfully share it with all of the world around us. It's, th it's what, uh, for me, it's a message of great peace and consolation. And even when life seems a bit more jaded than joyful, 
we can always fall back on that faith. We can always trust that God will see us through the hard times. God's grace will prevail. God's grace always prevails. We have so many stories of God's grace getting us through. We have our sacred stories. We have um, the ones that are depicted in our stained glass windows, like how God freed the Israelites from slavery. We have stories of the saints and our faith role models like Martin Luther. And we are living proof of God's grace, how God has seen us through this COVID pandemic and will continue to be with us. Even with so much loss and change that has happened over these past two years, our congregations and our communities are moving forward with resilience. A few weeks ago at our special Thursday night program and potluck um, for our international guests of the Northern Illinois Synod, we heard about how God's grace is present throughout the world. Our special guests from the Arkat, Arkat excuse me, the Arkat Lutheran Church in India and the North Central Diocese of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Tanzania shared how their schools and medical ministries are giving people who are outcast from the community a fresh start. The most vulnerable orphans, women, and children are offered a better, better life through education and economic opportunity. God's grace is setting them free from the barriers that held them back and they are restored to a better life in community. God's grace leads to new life here and everywhere. We have so many stories of God's grace to build our faith upon. To help us keep nurturing our faith and our trust in God's grace, we have lots of different spiritual practices that can help us keep grounded in God's grace and keep Christ at the center of our lives. Of course, for Lutherans, two of the most important ones are Holy Communion and Holy Baptism. Um, we talk about these as being a means of grace, which is just fancy theological fuller language for saying these things through these means, God's grace is especially present. In the waters of baptism and in the bread of wine of communion, God's grace is at the center of our being. When we swallow that bread and wine, God's body and blood is very much at the center of ourselves. It's in our stomach. It's at our core um, of our body. It's at the center of our being. Our challenge is to keep Christ at the center of our life when we leave the sanctuary. Our stained glass window depicts other spiritual practices that feed our faith and can help us keep God's grace at the center of our lives. We have two images that depict prayer. Um, you can, I believe in this shot, you can see the praying hands. Um, but does anyone know what this sort of image over to my, I don't know what direction it is on the screen, but you, it looks like you've got some holy thing on a cup. To me, it looks like cheesy communion bread on top of a chalice, but it's actually a sensor. So a sensor, and I got one to show you, a sensor is something that you burn incense in. So you put the coals and then the pine tree resin in here and you burn it and the smelly smoke comes out of the holes on top and fills the room. And so you can see it in uh, the window there. You can see the smoke coming out of the holes and wafting up and surrounding the prayer hands. This intertwining smoke reminds us that prayer connects us to God and to all for whom we pray. When we come to God in prayer, either to praise God and thank God for things in our lives or to humbly ask for God's grace and mercy or healing, we are putting God's grace at the center of our life. We are saying, I, I need you, I need your love right now, God, be here. It puts God's grace at the center of our hearts and of our minds. 
prayer keeps God's grace at the center of our lives for us as an individual and for a whole community. It's powerful when people come together to praise God and to pray together. Our stained glass window also encourages the spiritual practice of praising God through music. When we sing as a congregation, we are using our whole being to keep God at the center. We are using our breath and our lungs and our diaphragm and our core muscles so that we can sing praises to God. It's at our core. And when we sing the lyrics, keep God at the center of our heart and of our minds as well. When we sing as a congregation uh, together, individuals and a lot of people, there is power and there is beauty in what we can do together. Our church, which includes this congregation and Christians all over the world, can work together to keep God's grace at the center of our communities. We can work together through eliminating hunger and poverty or unequal access to education or health care or anything else that keeps people away from experiencing a full life, we can bring God's grace into those places. It's already there, but sometimes we just need a little extra support to keep God at the center. It starts when we come together to worship and then we take that fuel and that connection that we have out into the world. I am excited to see what the Spirit of God is going to do with our church and our churches um, throughout the world in the next coming years. And I'm thankful for our ancestor in the faith, Martin Luther, and his part of reforming the church and helping it refocus on God's grace. Let us indeed center ourselves and to pray together. We praise you, O God, for the freedom that you give us in your grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Strengthen our trust in your love and mercy. Guide us to keep you at the center of our lives and of our communities. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third, On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. Keep your church steadfast in your word, reforming God. Deepen our faith and increase our love in Jesus' name. Further ecumenical dialogue and partnerships, and equip us for unified witness and service in the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Come to the aid of the poor, especially those suffering food and water shortages or loss of homes due to natural disasters. Halt the exploitation of the earth's resources and lead us to seek justice and rescue the oppressed. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Guide leaders of all nations, Almighty God. Heal divisions, build trust, and remove barriers that prevent collaboration and cooperation. Bring neighborhoods, cities, and countries together to work for the common good. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Save from trouble those who struggle with hunger, homelessness, or addiction. Strengthen the overworked and give hope to those who do not know and have not had enough work. Console us who are burdened by illness or grief. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Reveal yourself to all who seek you. Empower the hospitality ministries of our tri-church ministry and all congregations in our community to welcome others to your feast of love. Foster generosity in our stewardship ministries to both our congregation and our wider community. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Gather the faithful at the table of your eternal banquet. We give thanks for those who have witnessed to your gracious presence, especially Martin Luther and all who have strove to reform and renew the church. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O oh God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of, our, of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Beloveds, hear this good word from God for you. God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. May the Holy Trinity, one God, guard and guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is beside you. Thanks be to God.